morning all this is mrs rod with a word in season today we're going to be talking about seeking the lord while he may be found and why so um that is one of my favorite things i've learned in my walk with the lord is uh seeking him early um seeking him before the calamity comes upon you, praying and knowing that the person that you're praying to wants to hear from you, loves to hear from you, is encouraged to hear from you, delights in hearing from you, and wants to help you. There's a big fat lie going on in the world that God helps those who help themselves. Friends, that is not in the Bible. That principle is not taught in the Word of God. In fact, God is almost offended when we seek other ways to help ourselves and use Him as a last resort if we call ourselves His children. So um, God does not help those who help themselves. That's why Jesus came. God helps those who cannot help themselves, okay? God does not help those who can help themselves. He helps those who ask. So seeking God is so important. Um, Deuteronomy 4.29, and these, this is the Lord telling the Israelites as they're going into the promised land finally, but from there, which is a place of captivity because they leaned on the help from everyone else instead of praying to God, he says to them, although they're going to be captives, you will seek the Lord your God and you will find him if you seek him with all your heart and all your soul. So God is saying, even in your captivity or your biggest problem, if you seek me with all your heart and all your soul, you will find me. Uh, a lot of people know Jeremiah 29, 11, that I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans for good and not for evil, to give you a future and a hope. But um, as important, or, or in my case, as I see it, more importantly, are the verses that immediately follow verse 11, which is the verses 12 through 14. God says, then you will call upon me and go and pray to me and I will listen to you. You will seek me and find me when you search for me with all your heart. Isaiah 55, 6 warns us, seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts. Let him return to the Lord. And the Lord will have mercy on him and to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. First John 1 John 1.9 says that if we confess our sins to God, he is faithful and just to forgive us and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Uh, there's a, a, an idea out there that I'm too dirty for God. I've done too many bad things for God to forgive me. That's quite the opposite of what the Bible teaches us. So you got to know that God is waiting for people to come and ask for his forgiveness un with an understanding that we need his forgiveness. That's step one is knowing that you need to seek God because you know in your heart and in your mind that only God can help you. That's a great place to be. That's called humility. He loves it. You have to come to God humbly. That's what God expects out of us. Um, also, the kings. If you study... Uh, First and Second Kings and First and Second Chronicles, they mirror each other. It's about the two uh, kingdoms of, that Israel became. Israel split apart, and there were the northern tribes and the southern tribes. And so um, Kings follows the, all the acts of the kings of one of the um, separated tribes, and then Chronicles follows the other. And so it's about these stories of how these kings did well and what they did and what they didn't do. And uh, Rehoboam, who was Solomon's son, uh, it was Saul, and then David, and then uh, Rehoboam. And so here we are, Re um, Solomon is, Rehoboam is Solomon's son. He strengthened himself. That sounds great in the world, doesn't it? He strengthened himself. It's an evil thing. Um, in the Bible, that's evil. But finally, he humbled himself after he lost a battle, and he admitted, the Lord is righteous. But then Rehoboam fell into pride again. And it says in 1 Chronicles 12, 14, he did evil because he did not prepare his heart to seek the Lord. He did evil. And then um, Asa in 2 Chronicles 16, verses uh, 7 and 12, King Asa, who started out well, said, 
um, God said to him, because you have relied on the king of Syria for your help and not relied on the Lord, your God, therefore, and then he tells them all the consequences that are going to happen. Also with King Asa's life, who started out so good, you can read about it in Second Chronicles chapter 15. He started out like one of those great kings. He was loyal and bold for God in the beginning, but he began to get very prideful and no longer sought the Lord, even in his physical calamity. And at the end of his life, at the um, middle of Second Chronicles 16, it says, so sad, verse 12, yet Asa, his malady was severe. And in his disease, he did not seek the Lord, but the physicians. And he finally died from this. He didn't seek the Lord. So here's the deal. Uh, Second Chronicles 16, 9, this says, The eyes of the Lord run to and fro throughout the whole earth to show himself strong on behalf of those whose heart is loyal to him. If you really do love him, um, do you know that a book is being written about you? Listen to this. This ought to really encourage those of you who are seeking the Lord and, and to seek the Lord if you're not. In his presence, a book of remembrance was written to record the names of those who feared the Lord and loved to think about him. That's Malachi 3.16. It's so important to know that God wants us to seek him out while he may be found. While he may be found indicates to us there's a time when he will not be found. You don't want to be looking for God at a time when he cannot be found. You want to look for God in a time where he can be found. And now is the time that he can be found. So now is the time to develop a relationship with the Lord by seeking him and, and asking him to involve himself in your life and show himself strong on your behalf. And when you do, he will hear your prayer and he will answer you. Uh, David's prayer at Solomon, his son's coronation, at becoming the next king of Israel. David, the present king, is standing up and saying this to everyone in Israel in the presence of his son. This is his prayer, passing the baton of king of Israel to his son Solomon. As for you, my son Solomon, know the God of your father and serve him with a loyal heart and with a willing mind. For the Lord searches all hearts and understands all the intent of the thoughts. If you seek him, he will be found by you. But if you forsake him, he will cast you off forever. This is not just an Old Testament prophecy. It's also a New Testament prophecy. And I challenge you today to read John 14 and 15. Gospel of John, chapters 14 and 15. Really quickly, I'm going to tell you how important it is that Jesus said, believing is not the only thing you need to do. You also need to obey. You need to seek the Lord and then obey when he tells you to do something. Jesus said, if you ask anything in my name, I will do it. If you love me, keep my commandments. He says, he who has my commandments and keeps them, it is he who loves me and he who loves me will be loved by my father and I will love him and manifest myself to him. Jesus says also, if anyone loves me, he will keep my word and my father will love him and we will come to him and make our home with him. Jesus says, peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you, not as the world gives do I give to you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. He says, he who abides in me and I in him bears much fruit, for without me you can do nothing. So we want to keep God's commandments. We want to remember to be humble with God and recognize in our lives that God desires us to be dependent upon him. Your parents have raised you to leave home, but God is raising you to come home. God bless you. Have a great day in Jesus' name.